Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India discussion on market and in this lecture we'll have a look at elasticity so before we begin let us recap what we had seen in the previous lecture we saw that there is a market equilibrium which is defined by the point where the demand and the supply curves meet each other or intersect each other the demand curve as we had seen it slopes downwards which means that if there is an increase in price from this point to say this point if there is an increase in price the quantity that is demanded goes down on the other hand the supply curve is sloping upwards because if there is an increase in price from this point to this point then the quantity that is supplied increases and when the demand and the supply curves intersect each other we reach this point the price that is Uh, defined by this point of intersection is known as the equilibrium price and this is the price at which the quantity that is demanded is equal to the quantity that is supplied which is the equilibrium quantity and we also explored what happens when there is a change in the demand or a change in the supply now a change is in demand is represented by a shift in the demand curve so if there is an increase in the demand which is shown by this demand curve that is shifting towards the right and a decrease in demand is shown by the demand curve that is shifting towards the left now if we consider an increase in demand so here the, the earlier demand curve was this the, the new demand curve is this so if there is an increase in demand then what happens to the price and to the quantity that is demanded or supplied so what happens to the equilibrium now as we can observe here the equilibrium the earlier equilibrium is at this point the new equilibrium is at this point now at the old equilibrium this were this was the equilibrium price at the new equilibrium this is the equilibrium price which means that the equilibrium price increases if there is an increase in demand similarly earlier the quantity that was demanded at the equilibrium was this now with an increase in demand the quantity that is demanded is this so there is an increase so if there is an increase demand then we have observed that there is an increase in the equilibrium price and an increase in the equilibrium quantity that is demanded or supplied in the market so this is an increase in demand in the case of a decrease in demand we will have this curve which is towards the left side so we will have a curve like this and in that case we will find that the equilibrium price reduces and the equilibrium quantity also reduces what happens when there is a change in the supply now an increase in supply is shown by the supply curve that will shift towards the right and a decrease in supply is shown by the supply curve that shifts towards the left now in this case this is the original supply curve and this is the new supply curve so the supply curve has shifted to the left which means that we are now talking about a decreased supply now there is no change in the demand curve so the earlier equilibrium was at this point the new equilibrium is at this point now earlier the price at equilibrium was this the new price at equilibrium is this so what we are observing here is that if there is a decrease in supply that leads to an increase in the equilibrium price so less is the quantity that is being supplied in the market so there will be more price at which people will uh, will have to buy this product what happens to the equilibrium quantity 
Well, earlier the equilibrium quantity was this, the new equilibrium quantity is this, and as you can see, there is a decrease in the quantity that is demanded or supplied. So, with a decreased supply, there is an increase in the price and a decrease in the net quantity that is demanded or supplied in this market. Now, when both of these processes happen together, that is, there is an increase in demand and a decrease in supply, then we observe that the price will increase, but the quantity that is demanded or supplied, it may either increase or decrease. So, we saw that if the situation is like this, so this is the earlier demand curve, this is the new demand curve, which is showing that there is an increase in the demand. This was the earlier supply curve. This is the new supply curve, which is telling us that there is a decrease in supply. So we are looking at an increased demand and a decreased supply. The earlier equilibrium was at this point. The new equilibrium is at this point. So where the two red curves are intersecting is the new equilibrium. Where the two green curves are intersecting is the old equilibrium. This was the old equilibrium price this is the new equilibrium price and so we are observing here that the price has increased the equilibrium price has increased which was expected because in the case of an increased demand the price increases in the case of a decreased supply the price increases and so when both are acting together the price will increase but what is happening to the quantity that is demanded or supplied well, the earlier quantity was represented by this point. So this is the quantity that was demanded or supplied earlier. The new equilibrium is at this point. So the quantity that is demanded or supplied has now reached to this point. So in this case, what we are observing is that the new quantity that is demanded or supplied is greater than the earlier quantity that was demanded or supplied. So what we are observing here is that with an increase in demand and a decrease in supply, there is an increase in the quantity that is demanded or supplied. But this is not always the case because we also saw this, this market equilibrium in which case the earlier equilibrium was here. This was the old demand curve. This is the new demand curve. So here again, we are looking at an increase in demand. This was the old supply curve this is the new supply curve so here the supply curve has shifted to the left so we are looking at a decreased supply so as in this slide we have an increase in demand and decreased supply and the same thing here as well an increase in the demand and a decrease in the supply now the question is what is happening to the equilibrium in this case the earlier equilibrium was here where the, where the green curves are intersecting this was the equilibrium price and this was the equilibrium quantity. The new equilibrium is at this point where the red curves intersect and this is the new price and this is the quantity that is demanded or supplied. Now here again we are observing that the earlier pr uh, equilibrium price was here, the new equilibrium price is here which means that there is an increase in the equilibrium price. However, the earlier quantity demanded was this much, the new quantity demanded is this much. So there is a decrease in the quantity that is demanded or supplied in this market. So earlier we saw that there is an increase in the price and there is an increase in the quantity that is demanded or supplied. Whereas here, there is an increase in price, but there is a decrease in the quantity that is demanded of supply. So what we are observing here is that in the case of an increased demand and decreased supply, there will always be an increase in price, but the equilibrium quantity that is demanded or supplied that may increase or that may decrease. Now the question here is, in what circumstances would these equilibrium quantities increase and in what circumstances would they decrease? What are the factors that govern that? And that brings us to the topic of elasticity. The amount of these shifts depends on the shapes of the curves. 
and that tells us about the elasticity of demand and supply. We define elasticity as a measure of how much buyers and sellers respond to changes in the market conditions. So we are trying to measure the response of buyers and sellers and we are trying to measure how much does this response change. That is the extent of this change. So we are trying to measure the direction of change and we are trying to measure the magnitude of the change. And this changes in response to changes in the market conditions. So whenever there is a change in the market conditions, does the uh, uh, does this demand and supply increase or decrease and in which direction and by how much is the question. That is, if we look at the demand curves, the demand curves are always sloping downwards. But then does it look like this? Does it look like this? Or is it more or less flat? So these are all different demand curves but they have a different angle of slope. And what we are trying to understand now is how this angle of slope determines the market outcome or influences the market outcome. Similarly, if we look at the supply curves, the supply curves are always moving upwards, but do they slope upwards in a nearly vertical manner or do they slope upwards in a very flat manner or is it somewhere in between? So there are all these different kinds of supply curves. The question is, how does the shape or the slope of the demand and supply curve influence how the market behaves? So elasticity is a measure of how much buyers and sellers respond to changes in the market conditions. Also, we can define it as a measure of the responsiveness of quantity demanded or quantity supplied to a change in one of its determinants. Now, in the earlier definition, we said how much buyers and sellers respond. Now, this response is seen in terms of how much is the quantity demanded or supplied. So, if there is a response of the buyers, then we will see a change in the quantity demanded. If there is a response in the sellers, we will see a change in the quantity that is supplied. And we are trying to measure what is this response in terms of changes in the market conditions or in terms of changes in the determinants of the quantity demanded or supplied. So this is elasticity. So the question is, the, we are trying to measure what is the response of the buyers and the sellers. But then is there a way in which we can quantify this? Because remember, we are trying to measure the change in the direction and we are trying to measure the change in the magnitude. Now, if we wanted to do that, we, we would require certain formulas. And this is one such formula. The demand and supply can change in response to changes in their determinants. So what are these determinants? One determinant is price. So what is the change in the demand curve in response to the price or changes in the price of products. So for instance, you were buying rice at 100 rupees a kg. If the price increases to 120 rupees a kg, would you demand more of rice? Would you demand less of rice? And if you do make a change in the demand, what would be the magnitude of this change? That is, if earlier you were buying 30 kgs of rice and if because of an increase in price, you are reducing your consumption. So will it reduce from 30 to say 29 kgs or will it reduce from 30 kgs to 10 kgs? What is the magnitude? So we are looking at what is the direction of change? Is it increasing or is it decreasing? And the magnitude, by how much is it increasing or decreasing? So the price elasticity of demand can be defined as a measure of how much the quantity demanded of a good responds to a change in the price of that good. To remember it easy, you can always remember the example, how much the quantity demanded of rice 
responds to change in the price of rice and it is computed as the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in the price so we are saying that there is a change in price and there is a change in the quantity demanded the price elasticity of demand is percentage change in the quantity demanded that is whether you have uh, decreased your consumption if you say decrease it from 30 kgs to 27 kgs so there is a 10 percent decrease because you are reducing it by 3 kgs so there is a 10 percent change if you reduce it from 30 kgs to 15 kgs then there is a 50 percent change so this is what is there in the numerator percentage change in the quantity that is demanded divided by percentage change in price so if the price has increased from 100 rupees a kg to 110 rupees a kg there is a 10 percent increase if the price increases from 100 rupees a kg to 125 rupees a kg there is a 25 percent change in price so in the case of plus uh, price elasticity of demand we are measuring the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price now this figure price elasticity of demand it can be zero why zero if there is no change in the quantity that is demanded which means that when the rice was available at 100 rupees a kg you were buying 30 kgs of rice but when the price increases to 110 rupees a kg you are still buying 30 kgs of rice because rice is the staple food so in such a scenario we will find that there is certain change in the price by 10 percent but there is no change in the quantity demanded so the, uh, the change is zero percent so in that case the price elasticity of demand will be zero now in cases where the price elasticity is zero or close to zero we say that the demand is inelastic which means that you are not changing your demand on the basis of the changes in the price so the price elasticity of demand when it is close to zero we say that it is an inelastic demand on the other hand it is also possible that with a small change in price you for instance make a big change in the quantity that is demanded a good example is suppose you are equally fond of eating chocolate ice cream and vanilla ice cream now if the price of vanilla ice cream increases so what you do is that even if there is a small increase earlier you were having a cone of both of these ice creams for say 20 rupees now currently the price of chocolate ice cream has remained as 20 rupees but the price of vanilla ice cream it increases from say 20 rupees to 25 rupees now what do you do now your response could be that because the price of vanilla ice cream has increased but i am equally fond of chocolate ice cream as well so let me now forego the, the vanilla ice cream and let me have more and more of the chocolate ice cream now in that case even though the price has increased only from 20 rupees to 25 rupees you will spend most of your money in uh, purchasing the chocolate ice cream and you will purchase a very less amount of the vanilla ice cream so it is also possible that say in place of eating 20 vanilla ice creams now you are eating just two or three vanilla ice cream so you are not eating any vanilla ice cream now when that happens there is a small change in price but there is a big change in the quantity that is demanded when that happens we will have a price elasticity of demand which is very large because the numerator is large the denominator is small and in that case we will say that the price elasticity is very much in a theoretical sense we can say that the price elasticity is so large that it can even tend towards infinity so an elastic demand will tell us that there is a big change in the quantity that is demanded even though the change in the price is very small and in elastic demand would say that even if the price increases by a lot there is hardly any change in the quantity that is demanded and we can see these uh, this price elasticity of demand in the shape of the demand curves now this is a perfectly inelastic demand curve 
that is the elasticity is equal to zero why because even though you have a big change in the price there is hardly any change in the quantity demanded so the change the percentage change in quantity demanded is zero the percentage change in the price is very large and so the price elasticity of demand in this case is percentage change in quantity demanded is zero divided by percentage change in price which is a very large value so total it becomes percent uh, price elasticity of demand is equal to zero which is what we are seeing here elasticity is equal to zero so this is a perfectly inelastic curve on the other hand this is a perfectly elastic curve which means that if there is a small change in the price there is a large change in the quantity that is demanded that is the numerator here is very large because there is a big change in the quantity that is demanded the de the denominator here is very small because there is hardly any change in the price and so the the price elasticity of demand in this case is close to infinity and we say that this is a perfectly elastic demand curve we can also have a unit elastic demand curve in which case the elasticity is equal to 1 So the percentage change in price and the percentage change in the quantity demanded are equal. Now, an easy way to remember the shapes of these curves is by remembering the word inelastic. Now, the word inelastic begins with an I, and we can see that in the case of an inelastic demand curve, it looks like the uh, the alphabet I. So it is. vertical so when you have a vertical demand curve then it is inelastic when you have a horizontal demand curve then it is elastic now when you have a demand curve like this so it is not completely vertical but it is more towards an inelastic demand shape than an elastic demand shape so we will call that this is still an inelastic demand curve but it is less inelastic than say this inelastic demand curve this demand curve we will say that this is more elastic than this but it is less elastic than the perfectly elastic demand curve which is completely horizontal so these are different price elasticities of demand now what determines whether uh, this demand curve will be vertical or horizontal or something in between so what are the the determinants of the price elasticity of demand the first determinant is whether you have close substitutes that are available if close substitutes are available the demand will be more elastic which means that when we say that we will have a more elastic demand it would mean that there will be a big change in the quantity that is demanded if there is a small change in the price now why would that happen because if you have things such as rice and wheat now rice and wheat are close substitutes so in case the price of rice increases then you can reduce your quantity of rice demanded and you can shift more towards wheat so in this case if you have a close substitute that is available whenever there is a change in price you can reduce the quantity of that particular product and you can shift to substitute another example is say different flavors of ice creams they are close substitutes so if the price of one flavor increases you will shift to another flavor or the uh, option of having different flavors of cold drinks now all of these are close substitutes and so if you have a close substitute then the demand becomes more elastic because you have the option of shifting to the substitute if the price increases or decreases another determinant is whether the item is a luxury or whether it is a necessity now luxuries have a greater elasticity of demand than necessities because in the case of necessities you have to have that item because it is necessary for your survival so if we talk about a thing such as food now food will have a pretty inelastic demand curve 
because even if the price increases people need to have access to sufficient quantity of food but if there is a thing such as a luxury item say ornaments now if the price of gold increases it is possible that people will decrease the amount of money that they will put into gold they will in turn say start to purchase stocks or they will start to purchase land because in this case gold is not a necessity it is a luxury now in the case of necessities the demand curve is very inelastic in the case of luxuries the demand curve is very elastic because here again you can shift to something else you have the option then it also depends on how you define the market because if we look at food so food has an inelastic demand because people need to have access to food whatever be the price so even if the price increases people will have to eat roughly the same quantity of food and so the demand for food is inelastic but if we look at the market in a very uh, narrow manner then we will see that different things have large elasticities such as chocolate ice cream has an elastic demand why because if the price of chocolate ice cream increases then people will reduce the consumption but when we look at food in total then even if the price increases or decreases the quantity that is demanded will remain the same so the definition of the market can play a role in determining whether the price elasticity of demand is elastic or inelastic and the more generalized way you look at the market the demand will be be very inelastic but if you look at the market in terms of very specialized products the uh, you will have an elastic demand for this is also true because when you look at specialized items then there are a number of substitutes that are available and because of the presence of those substitutes the demand curve will become more and more elastic then another determinant of price elasticity is the time horizon which is are you looking at things in a short term or in a long term now elasticity increases over longer time horizons as more substitutes become available now here again it is the availability of the close substitutes that we are looking at if you have a close substitute then probably the the demand curve will be more elastic now the question is how soon will you have these close substitutes in a short term it is possible that you will not have access to the closer substitutes because they either do not exist or because they are not available in your market but on a longer time horizon people will come up with new inventions or people will bring closer substitutes from other markets because the price of something has changed in your market so elasticity increases over longer time horizons as more substitutes become available example when the price of petrol increases the demand is pretty in elastic in the short term why because you do not have an alternative for petrol because if you have a vehicle which runs on petrol and the price of petrol has increased but even then you have to travel from point a to point b so you will have to purchase the the same quantity of petrol no matter what the price is but on a longer time horizon it is possible that you shift from your vehicle to some other vehicle probably you purchase an electric vehicle in which case because the price of petrol has increased you will now start to travel more and more in the electric vehicle and so you will reduce your consumption of petrol now this is generally not very uh, feasible in the short term but in the longer term we can make changes to our lifestyle we can make changes to the products that we are using so the the demand is pretty in elastic in the short term but it is very elastic in the long term due to greater availability of more fuel efficient cars or electric cars so in the long term you make changes to the items that you are using and you make changes in a way that you have access to some of the other substitutes probably you will shift from a petrol car to a diesel car or a cng car or an electric vehicle or maybe to a more fuel efficient vehicle 
so that you are able to reduce the quantity of petrol that you are demanding. So the important thing to remember here is that in the uh, short term, the demand curves are generally inelastic, but in the longer uh, time horizons, the demand curves become pretty elastic. Now, similar to the price elasticity of demand, we also have the income elasticity of demand. The income elasticity of demand asks the question that if your income increases, what happens to the demand for a certain good or service? That is, it is a measure of how much the quantity demanded of a good responds to a change in the consumer's income. So if the income increases or decreases, does it lead to a change in the quantity demanded? And it is computed as the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in income. So very similar to what we saw here, in the case of price elasticity, it was percentage change in quantity de demanded divided by the percentage change in price. Here we have percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in income. Now, there are certain products for which the income elasticity is very close to zero. Things such as food gains. So for instance, if your income doubles, you are not going to consume double the amount of food grains. You will probably consume only that much amount of food grains that you were having before. So in things such as food grains, the income elasticity is very less. On the other hand, for luxury goods, the income elasticity is pretty high. Because if you have more income, then probably you would want to have more number of finer clothes or you would want to have more number of ice creams or you would want to go out to watch movies even more. So for things such as going out for a movie, so the product here is the movie ticket. And when the income increases, the demand for the movie ticket increases. When income increases, the demand for ice creams increases. When income increases, the demand for clothes would increase. So there are certain products for which the income elasticity is very high. On the other hand, for things such as necessities, the income elasticity is pretty low. Similarly, we also have the cross price elasticity of demand. Now, in the case of cross price elasticity, it is a measure of how much the quantity demanded of one good responds to a change in the price of another good, computed as the percentage change in the quantity demanded of the first good divided by the percentage change in the price of the second good. Now, in the case of cross price elasticity of demand, the question that we are asking is, if the price of one good increases, what is the impact of this increase in price on the demand for another good? So, for instance, if the price of rice increases, will it lead to a change in the demand for wheat? Because when the price of rice increases, people would probably go for consuming less quantity of rice and they will want to have more quantity of wheat because rice and wheat are substitutes. Now, in this case, the question being asked is, if there is, say, a 10% increase in the price of rice, what is the percentage change in the demand for wheat? Or similarly, if the price of chocolate ice cream increases, is there a difference in the demand for, say, pineapple ice creams? So cross price elasticity of demand is the percentage change in quantity demanded of good 1 divided by percentage change in the price of good 2. So if the price of good 2 changes, what is the impact on the demand for good 1? Is what we are asking in the cross price elasticity of demand. Now, similar to the elasticity of demand, we also have the elasticity of supply. Now, price elasticity of supply, similar to what we had in the case of price elasticity of demand, is a measure of how much the quantity supplied of a good responds to a change in the price of that good. 
computed again as the percentage change in the quantity supplied divided by the percentage change in price. So if there is a change in the price of a good, does that impact the quantity that is being supplied in the market? Now for a number of goods, there will be a change because when the price of mangoes increase, people would want to supply a more number of mangoes to the market. So probably they would even pluck out those mangoes that are not that ripe because of an increase in price, they want to maximize their welfare, they want to maximize the profit that they have. If the price of food grains increase, then the sellers would even take out the food grains that they have stockpiled and they would bring that out to the market. Because of an increased price, they would think that, okay, let us have a greater amount of profit. Now, the price elasticity of supply is asking the same question. If there is a percentage change in price, what is the percentage change in the quantity that is supplied of a good? And different items may have different price elasticities of supply. We can have a perfectly inelastic supply curve, such as this. Now, in this case, even though there is a big change in the price, there is hardly any difference in the quantity that is being supplied. So, even at this price, the quantity supplied is this much. And even at a higher price, such as this, the quantity supplied is the same. So here again, we are having the same supply. So this sort of a curve is a perfectly inelastic curve. And we will say that the elasticity in this case is zero. Because even though we have a big difference in price, so here the denominator is a big term, there is virtually no change in the quantity that is supplied. That is, the numerator is zero. So this is an example of a perfectly inelastic supply. Now in the case of a perfectly elastic supply, if you have a very minuscule change in price, you will have a big difference in the quantity that is supplied. That is in the case of an elastic supply, when the percentage change in price is close to zero, that is the denominator is close to zero, the numerator is a very, very big value. So this is a perfectly elastic supply curve. So elasticity is close to infinity. Now, as we had seen in the case of uh, the demand curves, when there is an inelastic supply, we can remember it by remembering that the word inelastic begins with the letter I. And I is roughly vertical. So if you have a curve that is roughly vertical, then it is an inelastic supply. If you have a curve that is roughly horizontal, then it is an elastic supply. Then we can have different levels of elasticity. So this is perfectly inelastic. This is still in inelastic. This is an elastic supply curve and this is perfectly elastic. And then we also define unit elasticity in which case the elasticity is equal to one. Now the question is what determines the plastic uh, the price elasticity of supply. One is the ability of sellers to change the amount that is supplied. Because there are certain items such as land that cannot be created and in that case the supply has to be inelastic. Why? Because in this equation the numerator is percentage change in the quantity supplied. So if the quantity supplied cannot be changed for a thing such as land that cannot be created, we will have a numerator that is zero. And in that case, the price elasticity will be zero or that would mean that it is completely inelastic. So the ability of sellers to change the amount that is supplied governs the price elasticity of supply. It is also governed by the time horizon. Because even in the case of those items, for which the sellers can change the amount supplied, this can this change in supply cannot be done in a moment's notice. It will take some time. So for instance, in the case of ice cream, 
if the price changes the seller would want to manufacture more amount of ice cream and supply it to the market but this change in the manufacturing capability that will not happen in a day the seller would have to hire more people the seller would have to or the manufacturer would have to install new machines which will take time so time horizon is also a determinant of the price elasticity of supply firms cannot sell equipment in short time spans and so the elasticity is less in the short term in the long term more equipment can be installed or discontinued newer firms may enter or exit the market with increasing the elasticity so in the case of elasticity of supply there are two things that mostly govern the behavior one is whether it is possible for a seller to in, uh, to increase the supply or to change the supply and two even if it is possible how long will it take now why are we interested in knowing elasticity this is because it changes a number of consequences in the market so let us look at this application if there is a bumper harvest what happens to the amount of revenue that the farmer earns so what we are saying here is that earlier there was a fixed supply of food grains by the sellers or in this case the agriculturists now if there is a change in the technology that they employ or if there is a change in the seeds that they use so they are using now high yielding varieties and they are able to increase the output by a very large extent if that happens will they earn more or will they earn less now as you will remember the food grains they are a necessity and in a number of cases the demand is very inelastic because whatever happens to the prices whatever happens to the income people require a fixed quantity of food grains so this is what we are representing here the demand curve is pretty inelastic so it is looking very close to the vertical so it is looking like the letter i so the food grains have an inelastic demand now earlier the supply curve was this and now because of say a change in technology or shift to high yielding varieties the new supply curve is the red one so we are seeing that there is a shift to the right in the case of the supply curves now what happens to the revenue that people would earn so earlier the equilibrium was at this point so this is the the demand curve this is the earlier supply curve so this is the point of equilibrium so this is the equilibrium price and this is the equilibrium quantity that is demanded and supplied now the curve or the supply curve has shifted to the right and now it is intersecting the demand curve at this point so this is the new equilibrium price and here you have the new equilibrium quantity that is demanded or supplied now the revenue that the farmers earn is given by the price of the product multiplied by the total quantity that they supply so if the price increases the revenue increases if the total quantity that they supply increases the revenue increases so earlier the price was given by this figure the quantity supplied was given by this figure and so the revenue is given by the area within this rectangle as shown in green color because this was the earlier equilibrium so from this point we can get the price that was there from this point we can get the earlier equilibrium quantity and multiplication of both of these will give you the revenue that was there before now because of the bumper harvest the equilibrium is here so the new price is this much the new quantity is given by this line that touches the quantity curve at this point so the new revenue is equal to this p prime multiplied by q prime so this is the new revenue now as you can observe in both of these rectangles this area is the same that is
this area is one and the same. Now earlier, this rectangle was included in the ribbon. Now in the new circumstances, this rectangle is removed and this rectangle is added. Now as is very evident from this curve, this area in green color is larger than this area in blue color. So what we are observing is that even though the sellers are able to increase the supply, the agriculturalists have probably invested a lot of money into getting uh, the tractors or into getting more equipment or better seeds. So they are doing an investment. But what is happening to the total revenue? When the total revenue is going down. Why? Because the demand curve for food grains is inelastic. So in this case, the result is that a bumper crop is a bad news for a number of farmers. Because even though they have increased the supply, but there is a decrease in the revenue that these farmers get. So a bumper harvest in this uh, scenario is a bad news for the farmer. Now in this case, we are considering that the demand for the food grains is inelastic. But in a number of cases, we also observe a differentiation in the market. So it is possible that out of say 1000 farmers that are supplying the food grain, there are only 10 farmers who have shifted from the old supplier to the new supplier. So in that case, the total amount of supply in the market would not change by too much. But these individual farmers who have increased the, uh, the supply or increase the quantity that they are supplying to the market. So in that scenario, it is possible for them to increase their revenue. So for a few farmers, if you have a, a scenario in which there are only a few farmers who have increased uh, their output. So in that case, because the uh, revenue is equal to the price multiplied by the quantity. So if there is a very little change in uh, the price, and a few farmers are able to increase the queue. In that case, those farmers would be able to increase their revenue. But if a majority of farmers are able to increase the output, in that case, because the demand for food grains is inelastic, the total amount of revenue that these farmers would be earning would go down. So this is one application of elasticity. Another application, if, uh, is concerned with the market power of the sellers. So if the sellers are able to change the supply or the quantity that they are supplying to the market, how much amount of power do they have? How much is their influence in changing the price of the products? Now this is an important consideration for things such as petroleum. So in the case of the organization of petroleum exporting countries, if they come up with a resolution that we are going to reduce the supply. So we are not going to extract as much amount of petroleum. So in a short term, we always observe that there is a big rise in the price of petrol and diesel. But then how long does this uh, market power stay? Is what we are now interested in. So what we are saying here is that this is the demand curve and this is the supply curve as shown in green color. Now, in this example, the sellers are reducing their supply. So they are shifting the, the supply curve to the left. So earlier it was this green curve, now it is the red curve. The earlier market equilibrium was at this point. So this is giving us the price and this is giving us the quantity that is demanded or supplied. Now they have shifted it to this point. So this is the, the new equilibrium price and this is the new equilibrium quantity. Now if the demand and supply both are inelastic, which means that there is very little change in the quantity demanded or supplied because say things are a necessity. 
So things such as petrol or diesel are a necessity for the running of the economy. So in this case, we are observing that the demand curve is pretty much vertical. The supply curve also is pretty much vertical. Now, if such a scenario occurs, the the sellers have a huge amount of market power because if they reduce the supply, the price changes by a very large value. So as we can observe, the price earlier was this, the new price is this. So there is a, an upward shift in the price of this particular product. So the price increases. So this is telling us the market power that these sellers have. If they reduce the supply, they can change the price that is there in the market. Now, if you will remember when we talked about a perfectly competitive market, it means that the sellers and the buyers should not have the ability or the power to change the prices. But if the demand and supply are inelastic, then the sellers have a great amount of market power. But then that is, this is in the short term. In the long term, what happens is that people may shift their demand curves. So if the rate of petrol is too high, people would shift to say uh, more fuel efficient vehicles or they will shift uh, to electric vehicles or they will start using public transport or they will start doing carpooling. Now in such a scenario, the demand becomes pretty much elastic because people are now shifting the equipments that they were using. So earlier their equipments required a great amount of petrol or diesel the new lifestyle requires a much lesser amount. So now the, the demand becomes elastic. And an elastic demand is shown by this curve, which is not that much vertical as we were having in this case. So here it is a pretty vertical curve. And in this case, it has become very much flatter. Also in the long term, the supply also changes because if the price is large, then more and more people would uh, start to extract the oil. So even those oil firms that were uh, not competitive enough in this market because the prices were low and they had a very high um, cost factor of extracting the petroleum, they will now enter into the market. Because again, if you remember a competitive market, it allows a free entry and exit. So now more and more number of uh, uh, extractors would get into the market and so even the supply curve will become more and more elastic and an elastic supply curve is shown by this curve which is now pretty much horizontal so earlier the curve was having a very great angle and now this curve is very close to the zero degrees line now in the long term when this happens when you have an elastic demand and an elastic supply what happens now? Now again, if the seller tries to reduce the supply, so in this case, the curve is shifting from this green line to the red line. So it is shifting to the left, which means that there is a change in the supply. What happens to the prices now? Now the earlier equilibrium was this, where the green curves were intersecting. So this was the early price, and this was the quantity that was demanded or supplied. In the new scenario, this is the new equilibrium and this is the equilibrium price and this is the equilibrium quantity that is demanded or supplied. Now, as we can observe here, because both the demand and supply are very elastic, there is hardly any change in the equilibrium price. But there is a big change in the quantity that is demanded or supplied when the sellers have reduced the supply into the market. So this small price difference is telling us that now the market power of the sellers is very less. So in the long term, these sellers have a very less amount of market power because the supply and demand curves both become more and more elastic. So what we can make out of this is that the market power of sellers to impact the prices is only in the short run not there in the long run. So in this lecture, we observed that the quantity that is demanded or supplied in a market depends on a number of factors. 
it can change because of a change in one or more of its determinants. So for certain items such as food grains, the elasticity is very less. They are, are pretty inelastic in the demand curves. Why? Because even if the income of a person increases, he or she will be consuming roughly the same amount of the food grains. If the price of food grains change, even then uh, the person would be consuming roughly the same amount of food grains. If there is a change in say the price of potatoes, even then the people would be consuming roughly the same amount of food grains. So there is a pretty inelastic price elasticity of demand because a change in the price of food grains will hardly change the quantity that is demanded. There is a very little income in uh, income elasticity of demand because even when a person is having a larger income or a smaller income, there will be hardly any change in the quantity of food grains that they uh, want. And there is a very less amount of cross price elasticity of demand when we look at uh, the uh, food grains in total. So for instance, if the price of clothes increase, that would not lead to any great difference in the quantity of food grains that are demanded. But then if we look at the market in a much finer detail, if we say differentiate between whether a person is demanding the rice or is demanding wheat, in that case we might observe that there are uh, greater elasticities involved. So for instance, if the price of rice increases, the people would want to have less quantity of rice and probably more quantity of wheat. So in that case, we will start observing price elasticities in the demand for rice and we will start to observe a cross price elasticity in the demand for wheat. So we have observed that in a number of scenarios there is an elasticity that is involved. Now whether the, the demand or supply curve are elastic or not can very easily be, be made out by looking at the shapes of the curve. So if the curves are roughly vertical, if they have a shape like the letter i then it is inelastic if they have a shape that is close to the horizontal then the supply or the demand is pretty much elastic now the importance of knowing the elasticities is that they determine to quite an extent what would be the direction of change in equilibrium and what would be the magnitude of change in the equilibrium so for things that have an inelastic demand. So there is hardly a change in the demand because of any of the determinants. In those cases, because the demand is inelastic, the sellers have a much greater amount of market power. But at the same time, if the demand is inelastic, such as in the case of food grains, then a bumper harvest might also result in decreased revenue for the farmers. Because in these cases, because the demand is inelastic, so any changes in the supply will have a huge bearing on the prices that are involved. So if the supply is lowered, the prices would increase. If the supplies are increased, the prices would decrease to a very large extent because of an inelastic demand. But in the case of items that have an elastic demand, then the changes in the prices will be very less because people will very easily shift to something else. And this also brings us to the point that these changes will have a different ramification in the short term and in the long term. Because in the short term, the demands and supplies are pretty inelastic. In the long term, more and more sellers can enter or exit from the market. The buyers or uh, the, the people who are demanding the goods, they might shift to something else. They might go for, say, a, a better vehicle or, say, some other food grains. Now, in the long term, what happens is that the market power of the sellers reduces considerably because the demand and supply both become elastic. So there is hardly any change in the prices when there is a change in the supplies. So these sorts of ramifications have to be understood and they will have a very important bearing in how the market reacts.
that's all for today thank you for your attention jai hind